I think every individual is born with a number of qualities like you know, persistence, caring, empathy, uh, uh, preciseness, flexibility. There are hundreds of qualities. I think in the English language I have something around 300 different qualities. In the Dutch language I have around 250, so maybe English speaking people have more qualities. At least they have more words for it. So, and everyone has a few of those that you were born with, and that's what I call a core quality. And my assumption is that if you can express these qualities in, in your work, in your daily life, you probably feel good about yourself and are probably in the right place. If you cannot express these qualities, you, you know, you may be in the wrong place and may not feel so good about yourself. So, the essence of a core quality is that it is effortless. If you were born with preciseness, everything you do, you will do with preciseness. If you are born with caring, then everything you do is, is colored by that quality. So, core qualities color your, what you see, they color how you behave, they color your interactions. So, I think it's important that people know these, these core qualities, because they're really your resources that you have, that are easy for you. If you were born with determination, to be determined will be no problem at all. It's effortless. It's even hard not to be determined if you were born with it. It's difficult not to be flexible if you were born with flexibility. So it's nice when people start to understand what these core qualities are. It's like these are the gifts of the universe and you got them at birth. It has nothing to do with your upbringing or your education or uh, I mean of course we are partly nature, your core qualities, and partly nurture. That's what comes from outside. Your education and your parents have had an impact on you as well. This is all about finding out what, what belongs to you, has always belonged to you. So what are these qualities that uh, were given to you? Now that, I think, is an interesting journey and, and gives a sort of insight in, in your inner world. Now, to, in order to find out, it's interesting to realize that you're not only born with your core quality, but also with your pitfall. Because your pitfall is simply too much of your quality. If you are born with preciseness, then maybe nitpicking is your pitfall. Uh, if you were born with flexibility, maybe wishy-washiness is your pitfall. If you were born with determination, maybe pushiness is your pitfall. It's too much of something good. So we also have something beautiful and as a sort of gift for free, you get your pitfall. It's simply too much. Only once in the last 20 years I had somebody who said, I have no pitfall. That was, <laughs> that was funny because his neighbor was sitting next to him. He whispered just loud enough so that every, everybody could hear it. How about arrogance? And he stood up and said, I'm not arrogant at all, in a way that radiated arrogance in a fantastic way. So there, there are, I could say, I would say hopeless people. There are very, very few that think that they have no pitfall. 99.9% .9 of the people would admit that yes, your core quality has a shadow side. There is no light without shadow. That's, I didn't come over that, that's how the universe works. <laughs> So your, your beauty has a shadow side, and that's your pitfall. So, if people would only realize that whenever you see something in another person that you don't like, by definition, it is always too much of something beautiful, it would change the world. If that's the only thing people would realize. What you see in other people you don't like is always too much. If I'm pushy, that's not nice. But the beauty behind it is determination. If we, start to, if we would start to look behind what we don't like, and we start to look for the beauty in people, it, you, know, you, you, you start to discover that every individual has 
core qualities. So, uh, and we are so much focused on what we don't want, what we don't like, what's bad. This idea of core qualities and pitfalls is an attempt to change that and to help people to start to look for value in people rather than, you know, what, what's not good enough. So pitfall and quality simply belong together. There's no way you can escape it. And um, so why not simply accept it as, as the consequence of your beautiful side? So that's one thing that can help you. I mean, if you don't know your core qualities, it's very, usually very easy. You just have to ask yourself what, you know, what do people tell me when they say, don't be so da 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 What do you hear? Don't be so good. That's probably your pitfall. And then you think back and think, okay, of what is it too much? And you probably have already one of your core qualities. So it's not that difficult to discover it. It's just a matter of uh, what do you pay attention to? So use your pitfall to find out what's worthwhile. That's one sort of consequence of your qualities. The, the second consequence is you also have a challenge. If, you know, for example, if you have determination and, and the shadow side is pushiness, you're being a pitfall, your challenge is the opposite of that, not being pushy, which is something like maybe patience. So for determined people, it's important to develop patience. That if you are patiently determined, or determinedly patient, if you can find the balance between your core quality and your challenge, you, you're very, very effective. So, and that's true for every quality. If you have flexibility, maybe the pitfall is something like wishy-washiness, and maybe your challenge is something like consistency. If you are flexibly consistent, of consistently flexible, then you have found that balance. So in every, in every individual you have a quality and a challenge. There's no escape. And the funny thing is that we often look for the challenge outside ourselves. Because there's a chance of 95% that the core quality of your life partner or your best friend is your challenge. So determined people often have a very patient partner. Uh, if you have, for example, caring, caring is beautiful quality. If you are too caring, it's something like smothering, pampering. Maybe the challenge is something like confronting, direct. If you can be direct and caring at the same time, fantastic. But people who have, who have this quality of caring often feel attracted to somebody who is more direct. So unconsciously, we are all more or less looking for our challenge in somebody else, which is fine. Except that this challenge can also be too much. And then it, that messes up the whole inner world. The moment you find, for example, patience as a, as a, uh, as a challenge, some people are so incredibly patient they don't do anything anymore. So they become passive. And that's exactly what determined people cannot stand, what they are allergic to. If you have flexibility and you need more consistency, too consistent is rigidity. So flexible people cannot stand rigidity. So the, too much of your challenge is your allergy. And that is one of the most intriguing parts of our inner world that we also have uh, an allergy, which is simply too much of your challenge. Well, then, if you know, if you look at this, this gra graphic and you, you can make quadrants of it, that's what I call a core quadrant. And that's what I'm teaching all over the world at the moment, that there is a relationship between your quality, your pitfall, your challenge, and your allergy. And it's, you don't need to study five years to learn that. You can explain it in, th in three minutes. A core quadrant is a simple tool to help people to understand themselves 
and uh, to explore their you know, peculiarities. We are, all have our own uh, beautiful sides and pitfalls and allergies. And, and once you start to see that, you understand why, it, it, you know, why we mess up relationships all the time. Because if, if the pitfall of your son is your allergy, you're in for trouble. <laughs> So that happens also. So once you are married to your, to your challenge, the consequence, is, the consequence of that is that you're also married to your own allergy. Well, that, that was never the intention when you got married. And it usually takes a while, sometimes a few weeks, sometimes a few months, sometimes a few years, and then you start to see each other's pitfalls. And you know, then it's, it's also predictable that he says to her, don't be so pushy, and she says to him, don't be so, so passive, or something like that. You get the, the sort of, it's not a dialogue, you know, it's, it's a sort of argument. You can write out these arguments up front. So I have two daughters, and you know, they're now having relationships, and I tell them, you know, look at your partner and see your challenge and see your allergy, and if you can live with that, if you can accept the too much of your challenge in your partner, then you have a chance. If you can't accept it, you better find out now and not in five years or ten years. So, you know, and it's, in a way it's hilarious. It's a way it's like we are creating drama all the time in our relationships. And it, I know, I know there's a, a the company who, who produces soaps, the television programs, they, they use those quadrants to, to, to write the scripts of the soap. Because if you have two people who complement each other, it's fantastic. The potential of falling in love is there, but the potential of starting to hate each other is there as well.